Lately, we see a huge growth in the number of live production done in the cloud or using some of the cloud technologies for remote production. How can TAG help producers and uh, content providers uh, to do that better? Wow, there's a big question. So, I mean, remote integration, REMI, or remote contribution, REMCO, I've heard it called, has been around for quite some time. And that's not really cloud production, it's using the internet to bring feeds across. But that was the stepping stone, it was the gateway to actually doing more. And today we're in that era of doing more. There's a cost associated with cloud, both for running resources in the cloud and also for moving data in the cloud, depending where you want to move it. And in fact, you have to, when you architect a cloud solution, think about how much data you're moving and the cost of those transits as you architect your system. Bringing a large amount of feeds down from the cloud is an expensive proposition. Bringing them up to the cloud and building a TV show there and bringing down the TV show is much more cost effective, but the cost of compute to run the switcher in the cloud may offset the transit cost. So it's very, very complicated. But in the meantime, people are experimenting with different video formats, different video codecs, different video transports. So our flexibility in providing all of these resources in all of these formats allow customers to continue to use TAG as they evolve their technology base. Thus, they don't have to do operator retraining, they don't have to learn new software, they don't have to change anything out, they can continue to evolve. And TAG continues to add these formats that are used in the cloud as we go. Do you believe 2110 has a future in cloud and hybrid environments? Trick question. Absolutely on the ground, there's no question. Uh, in a hybrid environment, it's not unreasonable to put a 2110 studio on the ground. 2110 in the cloud, that's a different story. Is it actually necessary? It's a complicated and evolving equation and I don't think there's any simple answer right now. There are people working on making 2110 work in the cloud yep. for reasons I don't think I understand anymore because there's many ways to move media in the cloud. It is just data. And my own personal opinion is we gotta stop treating video like it's some special thing. It's a chunk of data and we need to move it in the cloud at the speeds we need from point to point to process it. And if we can get our heads out of the moving TV at TV speed, modality that the cloud allows, um, we can take better advantage of it. Video is a data, as you said, but a data that depends a lot on timing and time synchronization. Uh, video, it's not just by itself, but it's video, audio, uh, a lot of metadata that all need to be synchronized mm -hmm. to the milliseconds or to the frame. So um, this, this synchronization of things, is, is it a big challenge for cloud uh, production? It can be, it doesn't need to be, and there are resources available to take care of that level of synchronization. A thing to remember, 2110 deals with timing at the nanosecond level, right? So video frames are way, way up there as far as 2110 is concerned. It's a little mm -hmm. flag bit in one packet that says, oh, here's the start of your frame. And the frames in 2110 are actually distributed over the time of one frame's duration which is great, but it, it's an old-fashioned way to look at the world. If you can give me a frame out of your camera sensor, the camera sensor over here, if you can give me that frame in 100 microseconds, and I can send it across the network to you in another couple hundred microseconds, just go down the road not too far, you can be processing that frame long before the frame time is over. Right? As soon as we can move above real time with video, we'll be able to do a lot more, and 2110 is not the standard to do that. So. How can TAG help the customers right now with those things? Well, we follow standards development and we, as standards become deployed and become accepted, we implement them. We get ahead of the curve for customers. And if we ever get to non-real-time you know, ASAP video transport, we'll be, we'll be doing it. So one thing we can say. I, I think it's important to mention that we, we're able to support things like TRO7, TRO8, yep. not just on the ground, but in the cloud as mm -hmm. well today. Yep. And um, what about the whole business model of zero friction? How that uh, comes into the play with uh, the hybrid environments? Well, it's fantastic because as I say, the hybrid environments today are ever moving. You may put together a show tomorrow and you've got a bunch of feeds coming in off NDI you need equipment that will handle NDI. Well, guess what? We handle NDI. And that, I think, is the strength of zero friction, is that when you buy a tag, you get it all. Mm -hmm. And if you're, Atmos, if you're doing an audio Atmos production next week, you turn on Atmos, it's in there, and so on. And it's like our HDR formats. So they're all in there. You just turn them all and use them. And I think that is the strongest aspect of our licensing model. So again, one product for all the different workflows, all the formats, 
all the protocols, everything, all in a single license. Bring it on. We do it all. <laughs>